Okay, so we will be using the fractions method for analyzing poetry. Fractions is an acronym for first reading, a complete thought, identify the obvious, nuances, and statement of meaning or theme. So this is in Google Classroom for you to review. Uh, right now we're going to apply this method to a poem called Fences by Pat Mora. Um, so this is the first reading. Mouths full of laughter, the Teristas come to the tall hotel with suitcases full of dollars. Every morning, my brother makes the cool beach new for them. With a wooden board, he smooths away all footprints. I peek through the cactus fence and watch the women rub oil sweeter than honey into their arms and legs while their children jump waves or sip drinks from long straws, coconut white, mango yellow. Once my little sister ran barefoot across the hot sand for a taste. My mother roared like the ocean. No, no, it's their beach. It's their beach. Okay, so that is our first reading. Um, first time you read a poem, you're reading for the gist, and then you're jotting down your initial impressions. Um, when you're analyzing a poem, don't forget that the title of the poem is also important. Um, sometimes the title will provide uh, some sort of insight that is not available in the poem itself. So just remember that the title of the poem is part of the poem, too. Okay, so after the first reading... Um, I jotted down some initial thoughts. Um, the title, Fences, is significant because it describes both literal fences, such as the cactus uh, fence that was mentioned in the poem, as well as figurative social barriers. Um, the poem, so you can also draw in personal experience. So the poem made me think of time I've spent on resorts in the Dominican Republic and Jamaica. And... Uh, some of the ugly truths that are hidden behind these pristine beaches and these luxury resorts. Um, for example, while you're at these resorts, um, there's this vision of uh, uh, paradise that is to, depicted, right? You're, you're meant to feel like you're, you know, in this utopia, this, you know, beach paradise. Um, however, a short cab ride to or from the airport will reveal, um, you know, some shanties, you know, you'll, you'll, people that are living in poverty, um, you might pass a, uh, a policeman standing guard with a, uh, with a rifle indicating that, you know, the crime is bad in the area. So it doesn't take you long once you're uh, away from the resort to kind of get a picture of, you know, what life is really like um, when, once, you're, once you step foot off of this, uh, you know, fairy tale uh, resort. So anyway, first, uh, first impressions after the first reading, okay? So then we move to the ACT, uh, a complete thought. So this is where you section off the poem into complete thoughts and then briefly summarize each. So this poem um, actually is a good example for the ACT, a complete thought uh, step of the fractions model because essentially each uh, little stanza is its own thought. So stanza one, tourists come to the hotel ready to party and spend money. Stanza two, Every morning, my brother rakes the sand to make the beach appear new for the tourists. All right, next stanza. Peeking through the fence, I watch women rubbing in suntan lotion while their children uh, are body surfing or sipping tropical drinks. And then this stanza is pretty literal already. Um, one question I might have is, you know, the sister runs barefoot across the hot sand for a taste. A taste of what? A taste of, so not a literal taste. Okay, figuratively, she wants a taste of the, the sweet life, right? 
a taste what it, what it feels like to be on this beach that is forbidden to her, right? Um, and then finally, my mother roared like the ocean. No, it's it. so my mother yelled that it's their beach. Okay, so step two. Now, now for this po- particular poem, um, much of it is already literal. So the the step two act a complete thought. Um, in future poems that we analyze, you'll be required to kind of decode and decipher more um, you know, uh, connotative meanings and some of these metaphors, okay? But for right now, for this particular poem, um, it was pretty straightforward, okay? So this will take us right to the third step of fractions, which is identify the obvious. So here we're looking for poetic devices that the poet is using, all right, so whether they be simile, metaphor, alliteration, um, or whatever the case may be. So going back all right, to the first stanza, uh, mouth full of laughter. Um, not re- So it, I was looking at this first line, and it almost seems like, well, is it metaphor, or hyperbole, or personification? Not really, but um, in uh, doing a quick Google search, copy and pasting that line, it uh, looks like it's... It, actually a biblical allusion. Um, so this line appears in a Bible verse, Job 8.21. So I jotted, after a quick Google search, I jotted down that um, this could be uh, an allusion that the poet is incorporating. All right. Moving on to the uh, second line, we have alliteration with this um, repeated T sound, the taristas to the tall hotel, all right? And then we have hyperbole with suitcases full of dollars, okay? A um, little bit of exaggeration there. Yeah, I'm sure that they had other things in the suitcases, not just money. Um, so that would be hyperbole. And going back to this line, too, um, after the first reading, one, uh, one question I had was, why, why did the poet choose to use only one word in Spanish, right? So why do you think that would be? Why would the poet, I mean, obviously they, they um, are bilingual, so why would they only choose to put one word in Spanish? I thought that the reason was to draw emphasis to it. I mean, it's a short poem, right? So perhaps by... Uh, translating several words to Spanish, maybe they lose some of that impact, right? So I think that by including only one Spanish word, it kind of draws attention to it, and it's more powerful that way. And by the way, um, the specific uh, choice of word, turistas, I think that is, is powerful as well. They could have chosen any word to... Um, translate to Spanish, but turistas, tourists, I think that is, um, you know, there was definitely intent behind that. Um, anyway, moving on to second, uh, to stanza number two, we again have alliteration with the uh, repetitive M, morning, my, brother, makes, the cool beach, new for them. Um, next stanza, we have metaphor, sweeter than honey, while their children jump waves or sip drinks from long straws. So here we get into uh, some sensory detail with, um, you know, rather than just saying white, yellow, it's coconut white, mango yellow. Um, the sisters running barefoot across the hot sand for a taste. So we, we can, drawing on our personal experience, we know what it feels like to run barefoot across the hot sand. We know what coconuts and mangoes smell and taste like. So by incorporating these sensory details, the poet is drawing the reader into the poem. So we're able to better uh, visualize and conceptualize the poem um, when we are able to uh, use our personal experience and draw upon our five senses. Okay? And then the final stanza, my mother roared like the ocean. So we have a simile there. 
and then the poem ends with some repetition. Um, and by the way, we could say that this repetition is ironic in a way because it's their beach. Well, how could this be ironic? Well, because the native inhabitants uh, spend way more time here. However, they say that the beach doesn't belong to them. It belongs to those who can purchase it, essentially, the tourists. All right. So we've now, uh, going back to our fractions method, we've gone through our first reading, reading for the gist, jotting down our initial thoughts, um, then separating each complete thought and summarizing it, okay? Identifying the, uh, the uh, poetic devices, and then the final two steps of this um, uh, method for poetic analysis, nuances and statement of meaning, they kind of go hand in hand. So this is where we take all the evidence we've gathered for, through the first couple of steps, and we use this evidence to analyze the poet's purpose, their tone, and we also, this is where we bring our own ideas and impressions into the fold um, to consider why the poet made the choices that they did. Okay, and then once we um, arrive at our conclusions, we, um, we write a statement of meaning uh, summarizing our conclusion. So what that might look like, we might comment that the poet's purpose is to narrate or to describe the speaker's childhood. Um, now, make sure that you make a distinction between the speaker and the poet. Most of the time, uh, they're synonymous, but not always. Okay, sometimes this speaker um, is another character. So, in other words, maybe the poet is writing from the perspective of um, someone other than themselves. So, in which case, the speaker is someone other than the poet. Hopefully, I hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so, what other purpose might this poet have? Um, so. Let's go back to, uh, all right, so when we're, when we're summing all this up into a statement of meaning, we might say that in the poem Fences, uh, Pat Mora uses alliteration, simile, metaphor, hyperbole, and allusion in order to uh, arrive at her purpose of highlighting the distinction between social classes and to comment on the commercialization of resorts in third world countries and the impact that that commercialization has on the locals, okay? So, by going through each step of the fractions method for analyzing poetry, uh, we went through our first reading, read for the gist, jotted down some ideas, we separated the poem by each independent thought, we identified poetic devices, and then using all that, we um, formulate a statement about what the poet's uh, purpose is in writing this poem and how they achieve that purpose through the various devices that they use. Um, so I hope this video was useful. Um, we will be using this fractions method um, quite a bit. So you will get the opportunity to practice uh, um, on our next poem. So I will see you in the next video.